Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared two multiple choice questions for you as usual I recommend you to pause video here, read the questions, choose your correct answers and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. Those today's questions are going to be very easy, still I recommend you to watch video to the end because I think that I still would be able to give you some information that you didn't know before. So the first question is who is considered the father of genetics and here is uh, five answers to choose from uh, first Charles Darwin answer B Gregor Mendel C James Watson D Francis Crick and E Thomas Morgan uh, I believe that you uh, find all these names are familiar so let's start from the end of this list Thomas Morgan and uh, contribution of the scientist he was the first person to find that uh, units of heredity are chromosomes. And what is funny about his finding that he started his experiments in order to prove that chromosomes are not the units of heredity. So, because uh, be scientists before him um, theoretically predicted that uh, by observing through the light microscopy, that um, chromosomes probably units of heredity but Thomas Morgan uh, believe only in experiments in experimental science and he starts his experiments in order to disprove this theory and in uh, 1933 he got a Nobel Prize for his achievement he also very well known for making Drosophila melanogaster uh, model organism in genetics. So let's move uh, to answer D, uh, Francis Crick uh, and answer C, James Watson. When we mention one name we automatically mention the second name because these two scientists also got Nobel Prizes 20 years after Thomas Morgan for predicting a structure of the DNA. But uh, all the three uh, scientists is not considered to be uh, fathers of genetics. So we left with only Gregor Mendel and Charles Darwin. Which name to choose? Charles Darwin, as we know, is famous for his evolution theory. But he also is not considered father of genetics. Gregor Mendel is considered to be a father of genetics because he theoretically predicted that there are uh, some uh, units of genetic inheritance that now we call genes but neither Charles Darwin nor Gregor Mendel didn't got a Nobel Prize for their achievement. Why? Because first Nobel Prize uh, were given uh, at the 1901, December 10, and Charles Darwin died in 1882, and Gregor Mendel died in 1884. So, as you know, Nobel Prize is only given to those uh, scientists who is alive. So, if someone made a um, very important discovery, but it took uh, years for uh, scientific community to recognize it and um, if this scientist is not alive anymore such scientists cannot be awarded a Nobel Prize. So as you see the correct answer to the first question is Gregor Mendel is considered to be a father of genetics and second uh, question an entire gene has been removed from the chromosome by mutation this type of mutation is best described as and once again we have five answers to choose from let's start from the end of the list substitution and we never use word substitution when we talk about genes we use this word only when we talk about bases for example imagine that we have a sequence for example adenine guanine guanine, guanine, cytosine and adenine 
and uh, of course corresponding uh, another strand of the DNA would be adenine base pairs with thymine, guanine with cytosine, 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 guanine, and thymine here. If say one base here would be uh, substituted with another one, for example, guanine would be substituted with cytosine here on the other corresponding strand of the DNA cytosine also would be changed to guanine so we call this substitution so next term inversion inversion we use when we talk about whole chromosome level uh, for example if this is going to be a chromosome and centromere somewhere here and we have genes for example gene a, gene B, gene C, gene D, and gene E. If we have inversion, uh, imagine that DNA were uh, broken into places, and as you know, DNA has repair mechanism, but sometimes this repair mechanism uh, can make mistakes so uh, this broken piece can be placed in reverse order for example we would have gene A here gene C here gene B here D and E so as you see uh, if we had the order of the uh, genes as follows so after inversion we have gene order uh, these two pieces go in one direction and another is in reverse order so we call such mutation inversion so uh, answer C translocation and translocation is when we have one chromosome so imagine that this is chromosome number one for example and here is another chromosome number for example seven during meiosis uh, homologous chromosomes makes tetrosomes so let's build tetrosome here and two homologous chromosomes may exchange genetic material for example this piece can be exchanged for another homologous uh, piece uh, and such exchanges doesn't lead to any mutation so this is normal process we call this crossing over and crossing over may happen in many different places along uh, this tetrasome but sometimes uh, non-homologous chromosomes may exchange their pieces for example piece of this chromosome may exchange with uh, piece of this chromosome that is not homologous and um, this of course would lead to mutation and we call such mutation uh, translocation or we also call it reciprocal translocation, meaning that uh, translocation happens between two non-homologous chromosomes. Now let's talk about answer B duplication. Imagine once again that this is chromosome and uh, there are different genes on this chromosome. Gene A, gene B, gene C. And uh, if we have a duplication, uh, once again, the same chromosome, this is centromere. Uh, when we have duplication, we may have uh, genes A, A, B, and C. So as you see, gene A duplicated. So this type of um, mutation we call duplication. And deletion is when one of the genes would be completely deleted or part of this gene would be deleted so it's become non-functional and 
our same chromosome would look like um, gene A here and gene C here. So we miss gene B as you see. So once again, entire gene has been removed from a chromosome by mutation. This type of mutation is best described as deletion. And by the way, uh, what would happen if deletion would happen with only one base? For example, if we would have not substitution here, but deletion. Uh, first, of, first of all, about substitution, if we have um, codons as follows, so as you remember, codons include three bases, and if we have substitution here, sometimes uh, it doesn't lead to new protein coded by this sequence, because the last uh, codon position can vary, but the first two positions are very important, but uh, not the last one. Sometimes we change one base here and uh, we don't have change in protein sequence. Sometimes change of the third position may lead to change in protein sequence. But what would happen if uh, instead of uh, substitution, we would have a deletion here. We would have a frame shift mutation. So new uh, codon sequence would be A, G, G, C, A, and for example, uh, would be T here, Zymine. So as you see, uh, all following sequence would be completely different because we have here frame shift mutation and all the protein sequence after such a mutation also would be different. So we call such a mutation nonsense mutation because uh, frame shift leads to nonsense uh, sequence of the protein and such protein of course wouldn't be able to perform the same function as original sequence. Frame shift mutation uh, leads to uh, such situation when sequence after uh, deletion become random and probability that uh, one of the codon would code for the stop codon is very high. So uh, such type of mutation also leads to short protein that also uh, as I said, uh, depending in which place such mutation happened, uh, may lead to non-functional protein or a protein whose function would be affected with such mutation. So I hope you learned something new today. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.